Okay, everyone, welcome back to another video on the channel today. We're back doing some videos. Finally got around to working out how to use Vegas 17. So decided to go on to do a daily race C, driving the non-OP car, as you can see from the entry list in this. We have 19 Bugatti Veyrons versus one Ferrari at the home of Ferrari, pretty much Monza. So let's see what we can do in the Ferrari. Now, quick little note. I am recording this from Streamlabs OBS, so 1440p is available. Now, the colours look a little bit washed out. I do need to have a little bit of a play around with the recording settings to try and get them optimal. But I think they're okay for now. We'll improve that in the future. Okay, so let's get this race underway, driving the Ferrari at, in Italy at its home track of Monza and see if we can take on the OP car that is the Veyron. Everyone knows that is the car to be using this week. I think it's actually around seven tenths quicker than the ferrari over a lap something around there it's a lot faster let's just say that so starting from p1 we obviously did our lap in the veyron so we have got the advantage of starting from p1 however we're going to try and hold on to this position all the way to the end and do our best going straight into turn one we braked very late and actually braked a little bit too late you can see we just about made the corner nearly running over the curb but just about made it but luckily for ourselves the veyron behind me decided to give us a little bump draft going down into the second chicane so you can see down here we're getting a nice helping of speed from that Veyron boosting us along at pretty much the speed that the Veyron's driving so that was a nice little bit of help all the way into the second chicane but again didn't take into consideration that extra speed and actually braked a little bit too late luckily again just about managed to hold on to the corner without binning it however p2 in the Veyron, decides to slip up the inside there, puts himself in the lead. I wasn't going to fight that, no point fighting that. You know, lap one, it's actually probably a bit of a benefit at this stage to jump into that slipstream while his tyres are fresh. Like I say, the Veyron is a much faster car around here. However, the two Lesmos, the Ferrari, I think there's possibly, that is the strongest section of the track for the Ferrari Group 4 car. I have to say, the Ferrari Group 4 car is such an underrated car on Gran Turismo. Now it's obviously not the perfect car for this track but what I wanted to show you was that it is still possible to do well with this car if you drive it tactically, um, you, you create situations and you drive it sensibly and you can still get a good result driving not necessarily the strongest car depending on where you start on the grid. So now just sitting in that slipstream to P1 we've got two Veyrons behind us there, well we've got 18 Veyrons behind us I should say but yeah, two pretty close to us there, battling away, that's good for me. We're just going to sit behind P1, use his slipstream. We're not going to try and overtake him at this stage because what I want to do is try and build up enough of the slipstream um, and, and boost him if I can possibly and try and break the slipstream behind us. That is the ultimate aim here because if we can break the slipstream to P3, we can then concentrate on maybe fighting for P1 towards the end of this race. It's going to be very interesting. Like I say, the Ferrari will have the tyre advantage when we get towards the end of the stint on the end of the race. Now, the Veyron still, though, I have tried the Veyron round here, and I was able to do, I think, 56.6s and 7s even at the end of the stint. So, yeah, that car is still very, very fast. It is definitely faster than the Ferrari. I mean, I've tried both of them. Um, I think in, even in race trim, it's four or five tenths quicker at the end of the stint. However, like I say, we've got the slipstream. He in P1 has not got the slipstream at this stage race. So we're just driving very sensibly. You can see braking very early, very cautious on the brakes, just making sure we hit hook these corners up. And one thing we want to make sure that we avoid is any penalties. So driving very smoothly at the moment. Um, first lap, two mistakes at the start, obviously not judging the speed that we had, but now getting quite used to it. This was the first race I entered. I just jumped straight into a race starting from pole position in the Ferrari and yeah for let's see what we can do luckily for myself it turned out to be a really enjoyable race and was able to go straight into uploading this video and um, editing it and stuff like that so yeah going into the Ascari chicane you can see picking up that slipstream again we're going to break just past this bridge here now pretty much on the bridge the um, boarding that goes over your head there just to make sure we don't break too late and just keeping a smooth line through here just trying to make sure we get the exit speed as again we do that pretty nicely there and P3 and P4 are actually starting to drop back a bit. You can see 1.4, 1.5 seconds behind us. So that's actually kind of a nice little buffer we've got there now. Um, we can actually drive this pretty sensibly as we again braking nice and early. We don't want to go any for move. We don't really want to go for any moves at this stage. I want to just sit behind P1, use the extra speed that he's got down the straights, and just utilize that extra bit of straight line acceleration and top speed that we're going to gain from following in the slipstream. 
So yeah, over the line, fastest up the race so far, but the car behind us, I think they actually improved one of the cars behind us. Now going into the braking for turn one. And you're gonna see, I think it's here, we break nice and early, yep, nice and early, no issues there. And through the first chicane, keeping it very sensible. As he has a little bit of an issue there, getting on the curb, that is one thing about that corner. If you get on that curb a little bit wrong, it can just throw you off. I'm gonna skip ahead now to the start, well, the end of lap three, the start of lap four. And now we're getting that slipstream. We're a little bit further back at this stage, so we're actually getting a nice boost. But however, going into turn one, this was not a deliberate um, move that we did. We actually did a really good overtake without actually deliberate. We're gonna go into turn one, break where we normally would. And I just seen that he braked very early, so I just had to go out of the racing line and took it up the inside and actually pulled off a pretty good Daniel Ricciardo overtake there. Pretty much perfect into the apex, made the corner perfectly, out the corner perfectly, but that was not deliberate. I can't claim that was skill because I panicked a bit when I saw that he braked early. I had to get out of that racing line, get the car slowed down as quick as possible, hence why the gear shifts were very quick, and we just about managed to make the apex and get ourselves into P1. However, he seemed to be playing ball and decided to bump draft us, which is actually quite good because um, I put my hazards on to say sorry, obviously, because I didn't mean to go for that move there. I did really want to use his slipstream for a bit longer. And this is actually good for P3 in the race um, because now P3 is going to be catching us up because my car really is not the fastest car for this track. You can see him in the bottom right-hand corner. You can just see P3 hovering there in the background, around 1.5 seconds behind, one second behind P2, just waiting for that opportunity to pick up the slipstream. However, driving quite nicely so far while we're in the lead, not the position I expected to be in. However, now that we're in P1, we kind of want to hold on to this and see if we can push this to the end of the race and maintain this position all the way to the finishing line. That would be an insanely good job. If I can manage to hold off the Veyron all the way to the finishing line at Monza while driving the Ferrari, which, like I say, is not the strongest car down the street. You can only have to look in the mirror how quickly he's gaining on us. However, he is bump drafting me at the moment. He's obviously thinking about the long-term plan in this race trying to make sure that he gets to the end ahead of P3 also because if P3 joins this action that's going to create a bit of a situation for me as well because if for example we get two Veyrons in front of us and then a Veyron's getting a slipstream from another Veyron that is going to make it almost impossible for myself to go for any sort of overtaking moves but at the moment it's all going quite smoothly he's bump drafting us down straight making sure that we're breaking quite late there because I didn't want him to go into the rear of my car obviously where we've got the slipstream and he's bump drafting us so yeah doing that really nice actually got the power extremely well out of that turn the first chicane there at Monza and now working our way into the second chicane as you can see on that bottom right hand corner you can see on the replay camera that the gap there is just about sufficient to P3 at the moment you can see that we've got the Veyron right behind us and then we've got that third um, place Veyron with about 1.4 1.5 second gap but going through here you can see trying to do it nice and smooth again not risking any sort of penalties on the track limits it's, it's probably the best car i think actually one of the better cars for avoiding penalties at monza in the ferrari it seems to be i don't know what it is but it seems to be very easy to judge the width of the car and get the angles into the apexes hitting the apexes you'll see through here as well nearly every lap i was hitting the apex on that corner it just seems like a very very nice car i think the gearing helps it out i think the third and fourth gears are very nicely geared towards the two lesmo corners so it really does help you out um, going through the corners and getting the exit speed from the corners as well. Because as you see, looking at his delta whenever we came out the two Lesmos, we were pulling away every time. Like the second Lesmo, sometimes two attempts on just acceleration out of there because we're carrying that little bit of extra speed. However, you can see now we're coming up to halfway, 50% of the race done. If and we're in P1, this is actually going to be pretty. If I can hold on to this, um, the win in this race, the aim, what I was hoping to do was try and get a podium. I knew I was starting P1, but if I could still get a podium, that would be amazing. However, at this stage now, I'm thinking I want the win in this race. We're going to see what we can do to hold on to P1 all the way to the end. It's going to be extremely tricky and things are going to get a little bit closer. As you're going to see, we're going to skip ahead now to the end of lap six and the start of lap seven. Skipping a lap or so ahead and going down into turn one. Now, what you need to look at is in the mirror. You can see that they were on behind us building up the momentum is he going to go for the move this lap he's got massive slipstream and he's actually going to pull out. i thought he was going to bump draft us but i think he decided that if he bump drafted me there he might have affected our braking so he actually went for the overtake luckily the ferrari is so strong on the brakes 
and I was able to defend that by breaking a little bit later than he was and still making that corner with good speed and getting good traction out of the exit. However, now look in that bottom right hand corner with the replay camera, you can see now that we have got three Veyrons involved with this battle now. It's a three-way fight, it's two Veyrons versus one Ferrari. Can I hold on to this? Breaking as late as possible into the chicane and just about managing to hold on to the position again. You can see trying to get the maximum exit using some of the gravel on the outside. We're going to now go side by side through the first Lesmo. And again, we're going to try and hold it around the outside. This is absolutely brilliant. I love racing like this. Respect given from both quarters. Um, you can see he's given me respect with just a tiny bit of contact there. But again, through this corner, I hold the wide line. He holds the inside line. Again, absolutely brilliant racing. Nice, respectful race, and I love to see it on GT Sport. Um, that is the kind of racing that I absolutely love to do, to be involved with when you're side by side like that through the corners, and we're still managing to hold on in the Ferrari and P1. Now we're going to have to break late again. This corner does suit the Ferrari on the entry point. However, once you get on the power, the Veyron is going to just come flying back at us down this straight. Now you can see this was really a problem now because we've got two Veyrons. We do not want to let them both get past me. If both of them cars get past me, I don't think we'd have any chance of getting the lead back. So we're going to try and hold the outside line here. Now this was tactical because I know how good the Ferrari is around the outside. So we break extremely late. Veyron cannot break that late. He has to break a little bit earlier anyway on that inside line. And we managed to hold on to that P1 from the outside line. However, now you're going to see just how slow the Ferrari is on the main straight going over the line. He's actually going to go. I thought I'd covered that, but he decided to go all the way up to the green wall. I gave him that. So I go to the left. And now we've got a Veyron on our left, a Veyron in front of us, and we're actually in P3. However, we're going to break extremely late there on the brakes down into first gear. We give him the space. We, again, go side by side through. We give him the space on the inside, and that is lovely to see again. I have to say this, 99% of the time when you come across drivers on GT, they'll push you off onto the gravel. This driver, we both gave each other the space, and we both got through there without any contact. Absolutely brilliant drive, and now P3s gonna try and get himself up into p2 in the orange and black veyron on there behind us and we're still in p1 breaking just about late enough you can see just getting the, the rear of our car ahead of the front end of the blue veyron and we've managed to just about get through there nicely and built a little bit of a gap up here you can see myself trying to break that slipstream to see if we can now push on this is where the ferrari is going to start being quite strong because the tires are better the blue veyron behind us has run wide there he's gonna have dirty tires so again through here trying to nail it really really got on the power nice and early there and you can see we've actually broken the slipstream to the two veyrons behind us this is actually i was actually really excited at this point so i was thinking we're gonna get the win in the ferrari can we hold on to this so it's gonna be difficult if they work together and bump draft each other i don't know whether they'll be able to catch us off i was very unsure however you can see through here just keeping it nice and smooth now one thing we do not want to do is pick up a penalty. That would be a nightmare. We saw the other day when we were doing these combinations. Very easy to pick up penalties in different cars. However, the Ferrari was the one car that I was pretty confident at not getting a penalty on. So, we're going to go into the last few laps. You can see, managed to get the gap up to 1.1 seconds still, 1.2. Going through here, this is a corner that suits the Ferrari, but then we've got the main straight. And you can see... We actually have quite a comfortable gap to the two variants behind us. They look like they're battling. Them. This is the ideal situation. And one of the reasons why I kind of wanted to fight with them a bit. Um, to try and cause a little bit of a battle between them. Which then gives me the opportunity to pull away. So now we're on that final lap. Trying to hold on to this position. You can see we've got that gap just around 1.4 seconds still. So we actually increased it on lap 9. And like I say again. The tyres are in favour for me now at this, point, at this point of the race. But all we've got to do now. He's work our way through the chicanes and not pick up any sort of track limit penalty. So this is the main area where you're going to obviously pick up a very common penalty on GT Sport at, the, at this track is the chicane up ahead now. So we're going to break nice and early here. We're not going to risk anything. You can see very cautious. Actually going down to second gear to ensure that I didn't risk anything there. Normally I'd do that in third gear and try and get a really strong exit. However, I took it ultra cautious again through here down into third gear very early just to make sure that we don't run wide keeping it nice and smooth and now into the second lesmo where we're just going to go down to third gear on the throttle nice and early not pushing the limits anywhere near as much as earlier because we do not want to make a mistake because to get a win in the ferrari at this combination is actually quite an enjoyable achievement because like i say it's not the car to go but it does show you that there is other opportunities available to use not just the Veyron, there was 19 Veyrons versus one Ferrari and Ferrari has come out on top here. 
So yeah, extremely happy with this race. One more corner to go and we're gonna come home with the win at the home of Ferrari, Italy, Monza. And yeah, what a great performance for Ferrari. I will have to say, give it a go. I mean, it's gonna be very hard for you to, to beat the Veyron. I'm not gonna make it out to be easy, but, but I do like the Ferrari. It really suits my driving style. I love the way it attacks into the corners. Tire wear is good. It's quite a comfortable car to drive as well. It's not the hardest MR car out there in Group 4 and you will enjoy it but you will have to really keep the revs going and um, yeah we go over the line flicking up the dust there and take the p1 in daily race c so hope you enjoyed that video let me know in the comment section if you did make sure you hit that like button also and i'll be back with more of these videos now i've finally sussed out how to get vegas working and understand some of the things of it but yeah let me know in the comment section what you thought hit the like button and i'll see you all again for another video thanks again for watching everyone bye